With Halo Infinite's big reveal coming in July, just around the corner for us, we have many questions to be answered. In this video, I'll be doing just that from our community. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you our commentary about Halo Infinite. Today we're going a little bit of a question and answer session with you guys from the community. So what I did here is I went on my community channel post and went online and said what kind of questions do you want to be answered before the reveal of Halo Infinite? And a lot of you replied. In fact, almost 70 replies to this. So I wasn't able to get to all the questions, but many of them are repeats. Many of them I think also covered multiple topics. And so I think these were probably some of the questions I think will probably answer most of your questions. If you have any other ones, make sure you subscribe to the channel guys to keep yourselves up to date whenever that question air does go live. And that way we can get more involved with the content creation on this channel, to get you guys more involved. So let's get right into the questions here. Raphael asked a question essentially saying that we've had over two years of speculation no matter what is revealed, it might be just disappointing to people. And I totally understand that sentiment. I was actually kind of thinking about that as well, that we've had so many years to just mull over and just wonder what's going to be going on with this game. We've had little tidbits of information, but nothing super concrete as in like, we don't even know who the main villains of this game are going to be. We've had hints through toy leaks and things like that, but uh, nothing with vehicles really or gameplay related stuff. And so I feel like this could be something that is a big issue. That's why I think Alien Infinite needs to be having a huge reveal, which actually goes into our next question. Stefano asks, I want them to show us 30 minutes of gameplay. Give us a background on the story a bit. Explain to us how they designed their game. I would like to see more art style that showcased and of course classic gameplay. I think this was kind of touched on also a bit with the recent EA Play reveal showcasing Star Wars Squadrons, which I think they did a pretty good job of showing the game without revealing too much. I know a lot of people are criticized not seeing enough gameplay, but I don't think you want to show just that because that's a bit of a spoiler for you guys. I think what they want to do is kind of give a foundation of what's the purpose of the game, what can we expect to give proper expectations for us because right now for the last two years, We've been just going off the deep end of what we would want to see, what could we see, what will we see, what is kind of confirmed with the game. And so I certainly would like to see like a nice segment to this because this is going to be probably the biggest seller for the Xbox Series X console. I mean, even in the uh, May reveal of the console that they did go in saying, what about Halo? Like they specifically mentioned that game and they mentioned how in the Xbox Studio reveal, they're going to go more in depth with it. And I really would like to see it now. They probably Probably would only have about a grand total of like an hour probably for this broadcast I can imagine and so taking it up 30 40 minutes I don't think it's gonna be really possible I think that since we have so many uh, first party titles being mentioned we probably have probably about 10, 20 minutes at top so I'd say to explain everything with Halo Infinite so it's a very crunched in amount of time to explain stuff and show gameplay and everything else in between like for what people, fan, Halo fans want, we're going to need like an entire live stream to itself to satisfy the needs of Halo fans. So again, like, you have to lower down your expectations, I'm sure, a little bit. But at least we understand some fundamentals of the game is what we really need to see. Gentle Ginger asks, Yo, Kevin, I actually want to know what you're most excited about. I say for my most excited part about for Halo Infinite is definitely for like content side of things for me would be that definitely would be multiplayer as that definitely brings in more views and stuff like that. Uh, so thinking about that side, because my point of view is definitely gonna be from a gamer and a content creator as well. Uh, solely for my end of just being a gamer, I'd really look forward to seeing what the campaign is going to be like, uh, just because I want to see like that proper Halo feel come back to the game. I want to see a good, because Halo has always been such a total package of a game with an amazing story, amazing multiplayer and uh, user created content that can be made with the game. It's, you know, a total package and I would like to see that come back for it. Uh, mainly the story that was kind of what I'm looking forward to. I want to really see how they don't ignore everything that happened in Halo 5, but build off of that, they, but also bring back the old feels of the original series as well. So mainly the campaign is what I'm most excited about. Luke. Kovalkik, if I pronounced the name correctly, asked this question. Do you think there will be traveling to multiple locations as in planets or installations in Infinite or sticking to Zeta Halo? Other locations have been hinted at that were going to be happening before the events of Halo Infinite as in the Shadows of Reach, which is going to be taking place, I think, chronologically within the story of Halo's lore 
just months before Halo Infinite. And it does seem like there's going to be a strong Halo Reach influence with uh, this game as well. So I think maybe we're going back to Reach or at least have some reference to it. Maybe some flashbacks. We've seen uh, like a Carter helmet as a new toy for Halo Infinite. We've seen a cat action figure, as I mentioned in the previous video, coming in as well. And it seems very odd to have such a strong tie to Halo Reach when you're yeah, not really referencing a whole lot of other games in the franchise. So possibly that planet might be involved with it. Again, that's just connecting dots that might be there kind of thing. 343 has stated that they want Infinite to be kind of a soft reboot, a return to the glory of what CE had to offer, which definitely was focused a lot on the ring itself. We haven't been on the Halo ring in a long time, and so it'd be almost a new yet familiar experience. And I think uh, staying on the ring would be really uh, the way to go about doing this kind of thing. I mean, I can maybe see jumping between like different locations, kind of like we did with Halo 2. I mean, that still worked out rather well. Uh, as long as they write a competent story around it to make to have it all make sense. But obviously on a Halo ring, there's so many different types of topography, locations, technologies, and stuff like that, that you could do an entire game based on that ring alone, much like we saw in Combat Evolved. The frickin' Fricker asks, dual wielding. Why has this not been in the same game since Halo 3? I think dual wielding would be awesome. I think there'd be a, you know, there's definitely ways around to making it so it's a much more balanced kind of experience. And plus it's very badass to hold two weapons. I mean, let's be real. And plus it kind of adds more uh, fun to the sandbox of the game as well. You know, like in playing Halo 2, you can have a kneeler and an SMG. Not the most optimal setup, but obviously it's just kind of fun wackiness that you can pull off. And I think it gives player more options, which I think is great. Uh, though it does involve a uh, balancing though even in games like in halo 2 dual wielding was great it definitely helped you out in very close range but definitely like your battle rifle still stood strong as a one of the better weapons to use in the game so i think as long as you balance out skill versus abilities of customization and more variables when it comes to gunfights uh, that's the very big thing. I think the reason why they removed it is it's just much better for weapon balancing when you know exactly how the player is going to be using that weapon that it's much easier to balance out. I personally haven't really missed dual wielding too much, though I do think it would be an awesome addition and plus it's pretty badass. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly how to pronounce his next name, but uh, Lee Il? If that's how you pronounce your name? Uh, it looks cool when written out though. Uh, asked, is classic gameplay necessary to satisfy fans upon reveal? This has been the question the whole time of knowing that Halo Infinite has been a thing since 2018. Uh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, 343 is looking to meld classic and modern styles of Halo together with this game, depending on how they do it though. Uh, I think it would be better to kind of tone things back a little bit when it comes to movement and abilities, uh, but also having it there is just a little bit more fun kind of experience i think would be to you have your character do more abilities uh, that's just my opinion i mean personally i think halo 5 was fine i enjoyed it i like the sliding mechanics i like the boost and everything else in between i would like to see it reduced a little bit um, obviously i wouldn't like to see the randomness of abilities like we have in halo reach and the imbalance of everything like we saw in halo 4 so there's a I think a sweet spot we can hit but it depends how you design the game around it uh do you design your maps and modes with sprint in mind uh, i think sprint will be back in halo infinite just my opinion because by this point when halo infinite releases sprint would be in halo longer than it would be without it so i don't think going pure classic is the key but i think also just going strictly modern would turn off a lot of people so it's like going to be a very fine line to ride right there a lot of people point towards more recent games say as an overwatch or as in doom eternal and stuff like that uh, that they don't have sprint in their games or even counter strike either but they're super successful and popular games and so it kind of depends on how you build your game right like i know i keep bringing this up but uh i think strictly classic is not the, exactly the way to go and i think also strictly modern isn't uh 343 knows this they're looking to kind of meld the two together and hopefully things work out just fine chip douglas asks would you rather have an open world or traditional linear campaign uh this is definitely an interesting question as well as from when i saw the announcement trailer i got a very much of an open world feel when i came to this game with all the different towers shooting up like in the air that 
uh, Warhog just be able to drive out in this wide open field makes me kind of go like well why wouldn't you place it here or go there or go there you know it gives me an open world field I think I even mentioned that in my uh, reaction video on the announcement as well that it's kind of like an open world game which I think would be all for it and I think it's very possible to tell a very coherent story in an open world I mean Grand Theft Auto and uh, Rockstar have done an amazing job being able to do that. Something like even with uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which I played through. It was an amazing game. It had a very coherent, you know, cognitive story that had a storyline with it, but plenty of different branches and directions you can go to while getting to these main story points. I think that's the way to do it. Though Halo does play out, I think, best with a traditional linear campaign, a very curated experience. It allows uh, us to get a much more th uh, theatrical kind of experience when you have a more traditional. It's uh, a balance between of how they want to do the game right there. I got open world feels with this one. I think we might be doing that same thing as well. Brandon Lehman asks, what Halo soundtracks would you like to see return in Halo Infinite? Now, I think this question is more about single songs when it comes to soundtracks rather than the entire soundtrack, I think is what they're referencing here. Uh, I think the more important thing is not exactly what specific song, but what a specific feel are we trying to get with the music here? I think an important thing is to bring back that classic music style from CE, Halo 2, and Halo 3. I think that's the music style you need to base your music on for Halo Infinite, as it is going to be a soft reboot, strong CE influence with this game. And I think that's the main point about it, is kind of bringing, not, not having it sound so sci-fi or so busy like the last uh, soundtracks for Halo 4 and Halo 5 has sounded like. Uh, I mean, Halo 5 did bring kind of back that classic uh, main theme, but I think it did kind of have its own flair to it. I think if you kind of get, strip things down a little bit, bring it back to that core aspect, especially for that theme song of the da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, like you need to bring that classic version of that song back maybe some updated sound effects or styles to it as well i think it'd be great but staying very true to the nature of it I mean, we got a taste of that with the 2018 announcement when we saw master chief helmet you heard that bing of the piano just like you did in halo 3 so i'm assuming we'll be having a very similar kind of sound track with the game as well khalid of the sand asked a very similar question we answered earlier about the different locations but he also kind of talked about time shifts with this as well and could possibly be something and also mentions about how blue team could be a significant role with halo infinite i would like to see blue team come back uh there has been obviously a reference with it with the shadows of reach cover i think that was a really cool gameplay mechanic to bring in as play as other spartans in with your game like they did in halo 5 i just don't think they made them like unique or special enough to make it feel like you're playing as a different character and um so that's that one part about that kind of storytelling. Uh, I would like to see him come back. Uh, they, say, they did say this can be a chief focus story. Um, so maybe just for uh, co-op, they probably might do something like that, where you might be able to play as your custom Spartan. That would be pretty, pretty awesome in my opinion. Uh, again, bringing back the CE feels of this game, I think we're gonna be seeing just like a solo chief experience, maybe with some backup of some Marines. And with the time shift idea, you know, I've heard that kind of rumored around as well. Again, those are pretty much just like pure speculation rumors about that. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to see, as we do know that uh, the Discover Hope trailer was the very first parts of Halo Infinite. Like that's the beginning of the game right there. And I think it'd be really kind of awesome if we did kind of like a Quentin Tarantino style movie where you show the ending and the movie's about how you got to the ending rather than how we were going to the ending kind of thing, if that makes sense. If you've ever seen any movies from him, you understand what I'm talking about. And possibly with the time shifts as there's been many references to Halo Reach, maybe going back to some time point in time in Halo Reach as well, uh, playing through that campaign, maybe as a special side mission we never got a chance to experience from a different point of view or something. That'd be pretty interesting. So that about does it for the Q&A guys. Again, and I'm sorry I didn't get to everyone's questions, but I had like literally 70 plus replies on this topic. So I couldn't get to everyone unless it'd be like a three hour long video, but I think there was some overlap. Hopefully I got a chance to answer some of your questions that if it didn't get answered, guys, hopefully it was in this video in some way or another. If you want to get part of the next Q&A video, make sure you tap subscribe so you get the notification whenever we do post that community question on our tabs here. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you subscribe to keep yourselves up to date. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them as well. If you're new to the channel or miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.